my aim with a pitch is always, or with, with the conversation, it's always so that you guys, when someone says, hey, do you guys hear at Hotline Labs, that you can actually say, oh, yeah, they put the green back in greenhouses. You know, so what does that mean? You can do that next little spiel. So that's my aim. So we'll test, I'll test it later on when I'm talking to you. <laughs> Um, what I'm not going to be able to help you with is why the hell are tomato prices so high and is your product going to make them cheaper? I can't help you with that. I'm sorry about that, so apologies in advance. So yeah, um, I'm Tice, I'm the CEO and co-founder of Hotline Labs and we put the green back in greenhouses. So we've got a big, a really big hairy mission as we say. We want to take out 120 megatons of fossil emissions um, uh, every year. Um, and, and that'll make sense soon, like how we can achieve that. That's about one and a half New Zealand's worth of emissions every year. And, and more than that, we want to actually bury about a megaton of, of carbon every year. So it's kind of big lofty goals. It's, it's, it's not next year, it's in the next 30 years, but we think we can do it. And that only makes sense when you realise um, that when we talk about greenhouses, we're not talking about this greenhouse, lovely greenhouse. Uh, we're talking about these sorts of greenhouses. These kind of greenhouses grow about $250 billion worth of crops every year. Tomatoes, capsules, cucumbers, aubergines, strawberries, um, that sort of thing. But this is big business. Um, this is actually not even that big. Like our first customer is about 11 hectares. Anyone who knows a hectare, hectares a lot of space. Um, and 11 of them is about 11 times as big as that. Um, and uh, yeah, so this is, this is big. And, what people don't realise is um, these are really high-tech growing operations. It's industrial food growing, basically. Um, everything's turned up to 11, is the way we describe it. Everything is like maxed out. Um, LED lights, temperature control, humidity control. The one thing, um, strangely enough, that they can't get enough of is carbon dioxide. You know, the thing that we're all worrying about with climate warming and climate change. Um, that's because you've just maximised photosynthesis in a greenhouse. You've got everything maxed out and you've got to pump in CO2 um, to basically not let the plants get stressed and die. So in a typical um, greenhouse like this, per square metre, square metre they'll grow 50 to 100 kilos of tomatoes every year. So you can do the maths when you multiply you know, that up to 10,000 square metres, which is a hectare, times 10. It's big. Um, the, the, the kind of the dirty secret, just like nappies we heard about earlier, um, the dirty secret of, of greenhouses is they rely heavily on fossil fuels. Like they need fossil fuels to survive, to be commercially viable. You need to pump uh, to get to get to uh, use fossil fuels, um, and they use that. They burn natural gas as their number one source. They burn natural gas. They, they heat up the greenhouse and they can pump the flue gas through. And that's full of CO2, and that makes that gives them the CO2 they need. So they're heavily dependent. Um, we, was now word that our customers say they're addicted to natural gas. It's really hard to kick that habit because it's so good. It's so good. It gives them everything they want. Um, we're talking about a 20 to 30 percent increase. And you know, you've already maxed out. You've got a highly productive growing environment. That 20 to 30 percent is the difference between commercial failure and commercial success. So you need CO2. Um, as I mentioned, it comes from two places. Most of it comes from from burning natural gas. Some of it comes from shipping liquid CO2, which is what our friends Spates worry about as well because they need CO2 and they, they, they truck it from refineries as well, so they rely on fossil fuels as well. Um, so there's a lot of pressure to decarbonise, you know, that the, um, the EU and governments and supply chains, especially in Europe but in New Zealand as well, have been saying, hey man, you've got to get off this off natural gas, A, because you're, you know, your um, natural gas wells are drying up, but also it's just not cool. It's, you know, there's, We've got to meet our, our climate emission targets and we, we've got to get away from fossil fuels. And if you're a grower, you're like, yeah, yeah, I'd love to, but anything else I move to comes with a penalty. It's there. I take a 20 or 30 percent revenue hit in my business to, to move away from, from fossil fuels. That's, that's the reality of it. The same asset sitting there every year, but I lose 20 percent. That's not a very attractive um, proposal for a grower. Um, and so, so there's been this resistance for, for a while, um, and then um, the Ukraine war happened, and we're kind of now a couple of wars since then, you could argue. Um, the, the, suddenly this idea of like gently transitioning away from fossil fuels and looking for other sources has now become quite a, um, a, a scramble rather than a, a beautiful transition. Um, so in Europe prices spiked 20 times, they've now come back down to you know, 
something like historic norms. However, they've just moved the problem from being Russian natural gas to American natural gas. Um, so that you, that, you know your your sovereignty, your control over your own destiny as a, as a, as a food grower is just switched from one external um, supplier to another. So there's a lot more pressure to move away from, from fossil fuels. Um, and, and the point is that you know you're a grower, you've got to heat your greenhouse, you've got to heat it. It's got to be warm. You're, you're growing in, in Germany or, or France or, or Holland, which would be most of them are. And you, uh, you you want to move your heating system? Okay, cool. We can heat six different ways, many more different ways than this. But all of these miss out on that 20% or 30% productivity. So you're like, okay, we can, we can de decarbonise our heating, but what about the CO2, the hit we were getting that gives us 30%? So it's a big, a big challenge, and that's really a big lead up to us riding in on our, um, on our, uh, um, on our amazing solution. So we've painted this process. This has been how many years? Six, seven years in the making. It came out of Callaghan back when it was called Industrial Research, actually. Uh, not quite back into DSIR days, but IRL, IRL days. Um, and actually, um, I'll, I'll tell you the quick story about the, the, the origin story of Hotline Labs. Our, our, my co-founder, Vlatko, he worked at IRL for years and came up with this amazing technology for grabbing CO2 from um, waste streams. And he was uh, targeted at Huntley, you know, the, the Huntleys of the world, you know, the big thermal power uh, plants, um, went to solved this problem, figured out how to grab CO2 out of, the, out of the waste stream, pitched it to them, they said, we love it, this is amazing, but we're not going to pay a cent for it because we don't have to. There was no incentive to stop emitting CO2 if you were a, a hunter in the world. So um, when you were still working at IRL, it had become Calhoun at that point, he was on a, a bus up to a greenhouse. And this is one of those amazing moments. Uh, he was up on a bus, and the head grower, Rolf, who we now know really well, walked on the bus, he said, oh, I give you boffins. If you can solve one problem for me, can you make me some CO2? I can't get enough CO2. And Black goes, oh, crap. What are the chances of this? Like, <laughs> have I got a solution for you? Um, and we'll have it in a couple of years. Well, that was seven years ago. So it's, the point is these overnight successes take about seven to 10 to 15 to 20 years. But they're awesome and they've been all along. And this is what we came up with. So what we do is we take biomass. Biomass is a fancy name for stuff that grows. Um, and we, we look at the waste streams of that. So we have, we have two obvious waste streams. Uh, wood, of which there's plenty, especially in the central North Island, but all around New Zealand. And the crop waste. If you've ever grown tomatoes, you pull out crops at the end of the year and you end up with, if you're a greenhouse, about 2,000 tonnes of it. And it sits there in a big pile and you look at it and go, man, that's, that's ugly. But look, can we do anything about it? Oh, it's about half a million bucks to take it to land for. Okay, we'll just leave it there for a little while. Um, so you turn those waste streams into profit stream basically. So we've got a plant that you'll see a picture of shortly that we put on site. It burns it in a very special way so it's not chucking it on the outdoor um, fireplace, it's, it's, it burns it in a very controlled manner and then we pass it through the, the sort of secret source which is our hot line material. We've got a shipping container full of it, I was talking to someone earlier about these are, these are big bits of kit. We've got a shipping container full of about 10 tonnes of this limestone and it's hot which might give you an indication about it name of our company, it's a hotline, it's really imaginative, um, and, that, and that basically interacts with the gas that comes out of that burner and just grabs onto CO2 and then uh, stores it for a, for a couple of hours and then the grower says, hey I want some CO2, we blow air in, it, re it releases that CO2 and into the greenhouse and now it's just CO2 with none of those other burning gases, which is great. So um, it's kind of out there, it's kind of crazy, but we've shown it works and we found a customer who's like, man we need it so bad that we We'll go on this journey with you, we'll, we'll pilot it and we'll have a look at that shortly. And what we give to the customer is clean CO2, that's what they really need. That's what they're paying two and a half thousand dollars a tonne from, for from China at the moment. They're importing liquid CO2 from China, as crazy as that is. Um, we can do it a lot more cost effectively from that. Um, we give them a bit of heat, so it's hot when it comes out of the gas, so we can give them a bit of heat from the process. And we, we make a thing called biochar, which I can talk about after this, if anyone's interested in biochar, usually there's one or two people in a room in a biochar um, um, fix. So come see me afterwards if you know, I'll tell you what we use that for. Um, and this is the basic process, as I've just described, burn, fill up the limestone pellets, blow air in, feed into the greenhouse where the plants are growing. During the night, we kind of fill up the system again. 
clearly this is very simplified, it's much more complicated than this. Um, there's many more PhDs that have gone to it than this cartoon can, can say, but that's the fundamentals of it. Um, we've scaled up, so like, uh, I think Booster came in probably somewhere around here. So, you know, um, we started at 0.1 grams. It's really important to start at a really low starting point because then you can say things like you scaled up 30 million times. Um, <laughs> so, always start really low, that's my recommendation, so we can make this big bold claim. And we probably have scaled up 30 million times. Um, and scaling up chemical processes, which, which is what this effectively is, uh, is really hard. It doesn't want to doesn't want to scale easily because you get volume, volume challenges um, and heat dissipation and all sorts of other fun. So many, many um, chemical engineering innovations fail at this point and then everyone goes, oh, we'll try it. So we've got to the first commercial scale unit, so that'll make three tons per day. And we've got one better than that, we found a customer who said, hey, we like your idea, we're not going to spend a couple of million bucks on a piece of plant, but we'll sign a contract for you to supply us CO2 from that plant. Um, and we'll sign that contract for 10 years. And we're like, okay, that's good. we can do that. So that's where we are. So this is our first commercial um, customer. It's sitting on the site right now. I was there last Thursday, and we are um, in the next two weeks, plus or minus, we will pump our first CO2 into the greenhouse and we'll send our first invoice, and we'll be a post revenue company, and we won't be a pre revenue company. <laughs> and that'll be a big deal. Uh, we'll move into a different phase with Booster, probably from seed to early or to growth or I don't know, we'll move along. But, um, but the great thing is we're in a different phase of business because we've got a system that's scaled up at that point and proven out it works and people will pay for the product and that's quite a big deal. It's super exciting. Um, Rolf's, Rolf's the guy on the bus from way back then, from it was probably eight years ago actually when he first had that conversation. But, um, um, so this system, it's part of a, one of two systems that will go onto this one site. This customer, Gourmet Mokai, is part of NZ Gourmet, about an $80 million company that makes, uh, makes grows lots of crops around New Zealand. They've got three greenhouse sites, so this, is the, this is one site, one greenhouse, and this contract's worth between um, $5 and $10 million, which will be later over that 10-year period, um, and their other sites are worth similar amounts. So this is kind of, if you pull these off, they're great. Um, and, yeah. And what this means for him, in the last few years, CO2 has become so expensive for them, they've basically used it only to dose to minimise crop stress. So they haven't been getting any gains, they've been stopping losses. So this will get them about 20 to 25% of their production increase, and they grow $10 million worth of um, crops a year. So it gives them that, a couple of little bucks on top of their thing, on top of their um, revenue, it's all revenue on, on the top. Quite attractive for them. Um, so this is now is our time. I mean, this is the this is the big thing. We've got our first customer. We've kind of got proven it out. We've proven the business model out as well. But in the sense that we've actually shown that this idea of owning a bit of kit and selling for ten years is quite attractive, as long as you've got the capital to come up with that. Um, to that point, NZ GIF is really important part of this. NZ GIF is the green investment fund, of green investment finance. We've kind of realised that if we want to go fast, we want to be able to use other people's money, not shareholders' money, not, and, and sometimes not customers' money, but a, a lender's money. And if you can get that at the right, um, if you can get that at the right cost of capital, then it's very attractive. It lets you kind of grow much more quickly and, and decarbonise much more quickly. So we've got a first million dollar facility which can grow up to five million with NZ Gift secured. So that's just really on us to show that we can actually deliver the CO two and sell it. Um, We've got a great manufacturing partner, I was talking to someone earlier about that, you know, we're, we're, we're an R&D company that prototypes and solves hearing problems, but actually we're not, going to, we're not a production house. If we want to make the impact we do, which we think we could be earning $200 million a year in Europe, which is where our business will orient towards, you've got to have a production mindset. You've got to be thinking, how do we make uh, up to 100 of the systems like this a year um, in New Zealand and then in Europe. Um, so we've got a great part of that, and we've got really strong interest out of Europe. So we've got people we're talking to there are, are desperate, it's fair to say. If you're a person selling greenhouses in Europe, your business is pretty dry at the moment because you turn up people they say, oh, what's the plan for the heating system? And they say, oh, natural gas, and they're like, what about the CO2 system? And it's like, oh, we don't really have one. Very hard to write a business case to invest 50 or 100 million euros in a, in, in a business that hasn't got an energy future mapped out with any, with any Thing. So these guys build greenhouses, 
these guys sell energy systems to greenhouses. So they're both very keen for us to be part of making that, that, that their business successful again. Um, we heard earlier, you've got to have a plan. You've got a plan. Um, we're not going to talk to this. Please don't read the, count the number of dots and tell me that it doesn't line up with another thing. We've we'll already we'll had people tell me that. It's, it's meant to be an illustration. The um, <laughs> thing is, this is going to require determination, which is another one of the key things we heard earlier. This is a really, as a business, we're starting in New Zealand, we're going to be earning money in New Zealand. Ultimately, Europe is our destiny. Um, Europe is where the biggest challenges are facing the greenhouse industry. There's about 15,000 hectares of them in there. That's a lot. That's a hell of a lot. A big business. Um, they, they're, they're the most desperate and um, it's a, going to quick, as quickly as possible orient our growth to match up with the, um, the European demand. Um, and there is Hotline Labs. We put the green back in greenhouses. So you remember that? Yeah. We, make, we make growers more money and we, make, and we decarbonize as a byproduct of that process. So, you know, Hotline Labs.